Hi everyone, my name is Chris and in this video I want to show you my newest Hackintosh build. I have recently upgraded from the 11900K to the 13th gen 13600K, mainly because the 13600K is a more power efficient CPU and the 11900K was very power hungry and I'm using this desktop to drive the triple screen setup you see in the background, so it was getting very warm in there. And I have also upgraded from mini ITX to a micro ATX case, mainly because GPUs got much bigger in the last two years. And of course, this build is also a Hackintosh. As usual, you can find my EFI on GitHub, links in the video description below. In this video, I will go through my building process, the components I chose, and in the end, you see also my BIOS settings. With this video, I also announce a big change from my channel. From now on, I will record my videos in English only. Many of you guys have asked for this, and I've also noticed that most of my viewers come from outside Germany. So I hope you appreciate this change. And for my German viewers, I will keep my German accent for sure. So let's get back to the building process. For the mainboard, I chose the B66M Wi-Fi Plus from ASUS. It was very cheap and has everything I needed. Two M.2 slots, four RAM slots instead of the two from my Mini ITX, enough USB 2 and USB 3 ports to power my SIM rig, front USB-C and even a Thunderbolt 4 header. I chose the B-series over the Z-series because I am done with overclocking anyways, so B66M is just fine. Note that with the B-series motherboards you can't overclock by multiplier, only by the base frequency. At first I wanted to replace the onboard Wi-Fi card with a macOS compatible one. Removing the Intel Wi-Fi was very easy on this board. I just had to remove some screws on the I.O. cover. Then I could get to the little metal box containing the Wi-Fi card. Just remove the cable antennas from the original Wi-Fi card, replace the Wi-Fi card with the macOS compatible one and then you can reinstall the I.O. shield again. After replacing the Wi-Fi card, I had to put back the original fans and backplate on my GPU. I removed the original fans to be able to fit it in my NKSM1 in my previous build configuration. The GPU is a 6900 XTX from MSI, still one of the best GPUs you can buy that is currently supported by macOS. After that, I started installing the CPU. This is always the part that satisfies me the most, so I really like this process. To install the CPU correct, you have to find a little triangle on the CPU and also on the socket. I always use one side of the socket as a guide um, to let down the CPU in the socket. And the plastic cover can stay while you install the CPU. It will pop out automatically after you have closed the lever for the CPU. After that, I installed the M.2 drives, one underneath the CPU for Windows and another one in the second slot for macOS. Then I installed the all-in-one water cooling system. The AIO is a 240ml Kraken X53. Some weeks later I can already tell you that the 240ml is enough for the CPU, but of course 360 would be better and will also fit in this case. Then I installed the RAM. I chose DDR5 RAM from Kingston with 6000MHz and CL32. Mainly because I have only good experiences with Kingston and it was very affordable too. In my case I had a 2 stick configuration with 16 GB per RAM stick, so I chose the configuration starting with the most farthest to the right, so the first slot in my case, and then put the second one in the third slot from the right. After I installed everything I plugged in the PSU and did a small dry run. I always do this to make sure everything is working before I put everything into my case. Speaking of the case, I went with the ASUS AP201 mesh case. I really like this case, it just could be a bit smaller for my taste. But this has also something good, it has plenty of space. Officially it fits GPUs of up to 338mm, A360 RAD and ATX size PSUs of up to 100mm in length. If you don't use a 360 radiator like I did, you actually can mount the PSU cage a bit higher and then you gain another 10cm clearance for monster GPUs. Overall the build quality is very good, not as good as the NKSM1, but it is definitely okay for the price. 
At least it has no sharp corners and all screws went in. The only thing I would wish for is black screws instead of silver screws. I also like the mechanism to remove the side panels. You can detach everything toolless and it is very easy as well. You can remove both side panels, the top panel and the front panel. I also like the idea with the PSU cover. The only issue is that you cannot move it sideways to cover the cables going into the PSU. There is also a 120 fan pre-mounted on the back side, but I don't use it because it is too loud for my taste and can only be controlled via voltage. All in all, I'm super happy how this build turns out. I noticed that changing the GPU fans and also the reduced power consumption of the i5 brought down the noise level a lot. Overall, the system performs better, uses less power and is quieter overall. Actually, I wanted to wait with this build until AMD releases the 7800 with X3D cache. Seeing all the reviews coming out now, I kind of regret not waiting for it. But in the end, the Intel CPU also gives me some advantages. It's better supported by macOS for Hackintoshing. It also has very good and fast H.264 and H.265 video encoders. And for gaming, I always play in resolutions minimum 1440p or higher in my triple screen setup. So I think it doesn't play such a big role in my case. So that's it from my side. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. So let's quickly run you through my BIOS settings. This is only required uh, when you want to install macOS and use your PC as a Hackintosh. I always start by resetting it to the BIOS defaults. I'm on BIOS version 22.12 and I have set my XMP profile to enabled already. But um, as long as you install macOS, you should set your XMP profile to disabled to make sure you have no RAM causing kernel panics. Then go into the advanced mode. Um, I start with the advanced tab in the system agent configuration. You here set VTDD to disabled. In the graphics configuration, I enable the iGPU um, by iGPU multi monitor set to enabled. Then into the Thunderbolt configuration, PCI tunneling over USB 4 is set to enabled. Discrete Thunderbolt support is set to disabled. In my USB configuration, legacy USB support to disabled, handoff to enabled. Then in the PCI subsystem settings, above for G decoding set to enabled, resizable bar support also set to enabled. Then we can already go into the boot section. First, you should also make sure that your um, open core stick is set as your boot option number one and that the Windows boot manager is set to disabled. Then you have to disable your CSM module, um, launch CSM to disabled. Then we can already go into the secure boot section. This is required when you want to use secure boot only. Um, for example, when you want to use Windows 11, which requires secure boot. Um, set your OS type to Windows UFI mode, secure boot mode to custom, then go into the key management. And this is a very critical and very complex part. You have to enroll or kind of whitelist all the EFI files in your EFI open core folder. For this, you go into the DB management, then set um, append key, select no. Then you have to find out your um, open core um, stick. Um, in my case, it's the third option. Then you see your file structure on the EFI partition and you have to go through all the folders and select or whitelist all the .efi files. In my case, I have already done this, um, so it will give me a failed afterwards. But I will show you just principle how this process works. You select um, the EFI file, then select EFI image, the last option, hit enter, hit enter again, yes. Then in my case, as I said, it's, it says failed, but in your case, it should show success. 
and you go through all the EFI files and uh, do this to whitelist or enroll these EFI files so your BIOS knows which files are secured to boot from. Then we are already done and just can save our changes and reset and install macOS.